Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. We're here again, we're at Glass Bren in the month of December, the agroecological permaculture market garden. It's been a great year telling the story of Glass Bren and getting to know Abel and, and the rest of the family. And myself and Abel, we've become friends so much that we share the same wardrobe. Welcome back to Glass Bren in the month of December. Here we are back at what we all know now is our old site, market garden that we've just left to move over to Parker Argloyd, Lords Park Farm, the amazing 134 acre cliff top farm that we've just become the new tenants and stewards of. So in today's video, December's monthly garden tour video, I'm going to delve much more into our new place, what it looks like, what we're going to do there, our vision for the place, how we're going to grow glass bren, at this amazing new farm. But also being December and these garden tours are about what's happening in the garden and the land at that time. So I will talk a little bit about what you'd expect to be doing in December, what's happening on the land here at that time of year and as a gardener in general. So a bit like last month, December is a very quiet time in the garden. It's not really a time for doing a whole lot. We'd hope by this point in time to have mulched the beds down. So covered some of them in, in kind of natural mulch, organic matter. Um, covered others with black tarps to shut them down for the winter and we've cut everything back we've pruned things down we've taken out a lot of plants we would also ordinarily have this tunnel full of green it would be full of overwintering salads and spring cabbages and things like that and then some of it would be ready for spring planting too but because as we all now know we are moving we've moved already this tunnel is looking a lot more empty than it usually would because this tunnel is going over to the new farm very shortly. So this is one of the last days we'll spend in this tunnel. And um, yeah, you can hear more from last month about what it's like to leave here, what it's like to give up this place. But now we're gonna talk a lot more about the exciting new project, the exciting new place, and what Glass Bren is gonna look like as we go into the future. So I first heard about Lords Park Farm about two years ago, or just over two years ago, at a community consultation meeting between the National Trust and the community of Clan Stefan, its nearest village. And at that meeting, they laid out their new vision for their tenanted farms, working towards nature, people, and climate for all people forever. For me, that chimed very strongly with what we're trying to do here at Glass Bren, is creating food systems, creating resilient community, creating culture, around farms and around restoring the landscape, restoring ecosystems and trying to secure these landscapes for the future generations. So I could hear in their vision, you know, a real possibility, a real opportunity for Glass Brennan really felt like this could be the expansion opportunity that we've been looking for. So cut to a year and a half later, we applied during a tender process back in May with our broad vision for how we would bring the work we've been doing here over to Lords Park, which by the way is only six, seven miles away. So we're still serving the same community. We're still working in the same area. So it's not that much of a change in terms of the people that are gonna be able to interact with the project. But so the way we created this garden here and the approach we're gonna take with Lords Park is using the principles and practices of permaculture design. So we're gonna create a holistic, integrated whole farm design for the place, bringing together uh, annual veg systems with agroforestry, tree systems, orchards, forest gardens, rainwater catchment and ponds, different wildlife habitats, different types of landscapes, rotational heritage cattle grazing, oats and wheat cultivation, as well as lots of human activities, events, courses, workshops, and creating a whole design for the farm for how all of these things interweave and stack on top of each other in a truly regenerative, resilient way to showcase a resilient farm for the future. Yeah, and we're really excited and we really see Glass Bren's potential being unleashed at this new place where there's a lot of buildings, there's a lot of space, 134 acres, and it's a really, already a really nature-rich landscape and we're excited to, to do what we can to accelerate that process and help the journey towards deeper and deeper regeneration and deeper and deeper complexity and be real stewards of this land for the long term. And that's. That's what we're excited to do, that's what we feel we can do, and that's what Glass Bren is about. And yeah, we're really excited to get started. But, you know, before we 
you know, I always talk, teach this on permaculture courses. It's the first principle of, of permaculture. Observe and interact before you do anything, before you come in and impose your human ideas on a place. You need to spend time um, observing. You need to spend time getting to know the place, getting to know where the animals travel, getting to know where the birds nest, getting to know where the wind blows, the sun shines, the cooler spots, the warmer spots, all the little microclimates that are around how people move through the farm, how the farm flows, how water flows. There's so much you need to understand about a place before you start imposing our idea of human systems on it. So that's gonna be the thing we do first. And yeah, we're excited to spend a winter just landing in the place, observing it before we get started in the spring with creating some of the growing systems like you see here uh, at our old site. So it, it's going to be a fascinating and interesting journey for you guys. Mm. Um, like I mentioned last month, I'd be really honoured if you will have me along and, and, and create more videos, yeah. take more photos of, of that journey. Yeah. Yeah. But today's question comes from... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I instantly was like, oh no, crap, I didn't think of a name. Billy and then, Ray and then I was like, Deirdre. Deidre, say Deidre. Oh, Deidre. Deidre, Deidre. But that brings me on to the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. I don't know whether we should add <sighs> this. So the reason we're stumbling over this is actually because no one had put a question in full for disclosure. this month. So, yeah, full disclosure, we've discussed, <laughs> okay, what's a nice, interesting question? Sometimes I've had to call someone and I'll call a friend of the channel or a friend yeah. of us to say, right, so, give us a yeah. question. So come on guys, where are your questions? Yeah, so please. Like, I need questions to answer. We need questions. To save us making so, up funny names for, for people today, who might have asked the question. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we do have a question. It comes from Engelbert Pumpernickel. And <laughs> they ask... Hi Engelbert. Oh. Engelbert. Thanks Engel. Thanks. Being that you're moving, um, can you, not only, can you, can, what, what are you taking with you? Can you take it? And how do you yeah. transplant things that you're taking from here to your new site? Yeah, um, it's a good question, hum, uh, Engelbert. Um, so yeah, this is a question that's come up quite a lot from uh, volunteers and people in our community too. So um, obviously there's certain parts of the infrastructure, first of all, that we can take. So this tunnel, for example, is gonna come with us. That's gonna be quite a big job, but it's tunnels are expensive, so we can't really afford to leave it here. Um, Water tanks, some of our IBC water tanks are coming with us. Those kind of things, obviously all of our tools and all those things. But as far as the plants go, it's a tricky one. Um, so our trees, our fruit trees are far too mature now to, to think about moving. Um, so quite happy to leave them here. There's, there's walnuts, there's hazelnuts, there's apples, pears, cherries, plums, a couple of quinces, um, and you know, there's I don't feel bad at all about leaving them because the fruits will still be enjoyed. We'll probably still come back and harvest the fruits. Um, but, you know, it's a great legacy to plant trees and leave them uh, nothing to be lost there. What we will try and do is, is propagate some of the perennials. Now, this is a word you might be familiar with, propagation. Uh, it's the word we use for when we create new plants out of existing plants. So lots of different ways to do that. Um, I'd recommend getting a book or, or going on a YouTube video about propagation but um, for us so behind me you've got that amazing grapevine that we've been seeing all through the year in this tunnel so rather than trying to move that we'll just take cuttings from it so that's that just means cutting a length of of the plant of the woody part of the plant and sticking it in some soil uh, and creating a new plant out of that so that's how we started this vine a couple of years ago and that's what we'll do when we move over so we'll do the same for uh, things like raspberries black currants those kind of things that we don't really want to move. We would just want to create cuttings that will create new plants. Um, things like, so today I was digging up some strawberry plants. Um, so we can dig those up, split them. We can leave a few behind and take new plants because strawberries are always replicating and the same for rhubarb plants. Um, so we'll try and do that as much as possible. We'll try and take some of our comfrey with us because we've got so much comfrey here now. Um, so really focusing on those plants that are 
perennial, naturally replicating and increasing, um, and try to take those to sort of be the first pioneer plants of the new growing systems over at the new place. Um, yeah, so, and apart from that, we'll probably try and take a little bit of soil, um, not a lot, but we'll just try and take a little bit to inoculate the new compost piles. So it feels like, yeah, just put some in my top pocket. Um, so it feels like we're, we're taking some of the life here to start the life over there and create some kind of connection between the two places. So um, yeah, um, as I said, there's a lot of letting go to do. Um, but you know, in, in the last thing I would say probably is, it's a very modern human thing to think of these things as, as objects that we, that we want to take with us, but actually um, it's the greatest act of service to build soil and to plant trees and to increase biodiversity and create habitat. And, you know, even if you do that for a few years and then you have to move on, that's, there's nothing lost because what you've done is contributed something to the long-term re regenerative future of, of the planet and of your local environment. And so that's always going to be a great legacy to leave behind. Um, and I'm really proud of all the people that have been part of that legacy here. Of, I have to mention my co-director, Stefan and Louisa, uh, the support of my family here, of Ange and Col and my siblings and everybody here. And, you know, 60 plus volunteers who have been involved over the last few years, not to mention hundreds more people who have supported, become VegBox members, they're all part of this legacy that they're, they're they're all woven into the fabric of of what what's been created here and um yeah i want this video to celebrate what we've done here but also to celebrate all of all of them all of you if you're watching um because this this certainly wasn't something i did alone and um whilst i'm always the one in front of the camera on these videos um there's a whole community of people behind this place. And, and I think what we've, what I'm most proud of is that we've shown what you can do when you bring people together around growing food. So yeah, um, we'll take that with us uh, for sure. It's a great, great way to end. Great way, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't even know, I was like, what, what do I say <laughs> following that? You just have to cut that. Yeah, moment. yeah, you just <laughs> cut the video. If they want to learn more about Glassbrin and yeah. maybe sign up for like the um, yeah. newsletters that you do, where should yeah. they go? So don't forget, every Sunday morning I release a newsletter. Um, it's called the Veggie Love News and it's full of ponderings about that week on the farm, what's been going on, what I've been thinking about, um, some of the bigger issues around what we're trying to do through Glassbrin, uh, as well as sharing what events are coming up and things that you can get involved in. Um, so just go on our website, stick your email in, you can be part of that list. Um, also follow us on social media, uh, at Glassbren on Instagram, uh, Glassbren CSA on Facebook. Um, yeah, and hopefully if you're local to here, then we'll see you at some of our community events and um, things we've got going on on the farm next year. Um, but if you're not, well, keep watching, keep watching A Great Alternative. Um, we're going to keep working together, so I'm sure there's going to be lots of opportunities to see what comes next and um yeah uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to share the space with you every month for the last year um and yeah stay in touch we'll definitely have more if you're interested like subscribe share all that kind of stuff especially share i think we the, the, these are still at the moment as of recording these videos they're getting a few hundred views um and but we're getting some great comments from people that that mm. really yeah, help to make it feel worthwhile that they are really helping people. So, so yeah, please, if there's anyone that you think would be interested, then, then yeah, share it with them. Uh, and otherwise, thank you again, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>